Bookmen just hit different. They do. I love them. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Bailey and I like to read a little bit. One person, just one of you, requested that I talk about my favorite book boyfriends of all time. And that's literally all it took because I love to yap about bookmen. Who doesn't? if we're being completely honest, and book women too. Maybe I'll do another video about my favorite book girlfriends because the women, the women be hidden in these books, okay? Let me just say. So yeah, that's what we're gonna talk about today. If you see me scratching, I just got a new tattoo. I will insert a picture of what it looks like here if you did not see it on my Instagram story. It was very painful. It goes from rib to hip bone and I sat for like eight hours and I mean with a few breaks in between but it oh it was horrible horrible but yeah it looks really good so if you see me not i'm not gonna scratch because you're not supposed to scratch but if you see me kind of like lightly tapping because it's in the healing process and it sucks and i finally get to take the bandage off today mind your business thank you okay so i have my list of top 10 book boyfriends and this was really hard i have done it once before but i've had to move them around a little bit it stays pretty firm there are characters that I think may make it onto this list, but I'm not quite sure yet because like series aren't done and you know, yada, 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 whatever. But there's no rhyme or reason. It's just how much I think about these bookmen and how much I love them and that kind of thing and how much they affected me while I was reading about them. That's what gets them on this list, all right? And there's a variety of different types of characters on this list. You're probably gonna be a little bit surprised, maybe. I don't know, probably not. I'm pretty predictable if I'm being totally honest. <laughs> so we are going to start with number 10, and that is going to be High Reeve Draco Malfoy from Manacled. Not from Harry Potter, because Harry Potter is not, no, Manacled is Harry Potter. This is how, this is, this is my Harry Potter. I am so obsessed with him, and I think the girlies that get it, get it, because this is the type of man, here's, okay. I'm getting a little bit flustered just thinking about him, okay? This is the type of man that would literally sacrifice the world for her, not her for the world. Hyria Draco is the most morally gray, one of the most morally gray men that I have ever read about in books, and I love him. At, ugh, he is so emo sad boy. He is so emo sad boy, and I just, I eat it up every single time. Every single time. And, you know, I'm kind of shocked that there's a blonde on this list. You're going to be even more shocked when you find out there's two more. Yeah, yeah, who would have thought? Not me. Not me. I just, I just want to hug him, you know? and maybe other things, but that's beside the point. And then coming in at number nine, we have Damon Torrance from Kill Switch. Another emo sad boy, are we surprised? No. And this one is just all kinds of messed up and that's how I like him, you know? <laughs> um, Damon is just, I feel like he could really use a hug, like a real big hug, I just wanna hug him. That man has been through so much so much and he was so mean at the beginning of the Devil's Night series, like I was like, I know I'm gonna like him because I really like the mean ones, but <laughs> I'm really exposing myself here. But because it goes deeper, you know, the issues are deeper. You wouldn't think that he is as deep of a character as he is, but that man has been through so much and it's those that really truly love the deepest, you know? So that is why Damon Torrance is at number nine. I love him, he is so fine. That man is so fine. At number eight, we have Killian Carson. All right, I love this man. This man, oh, there is something about a psychopath who is also like just silly goofy. Like he's just, he's just a little silly goofy, you know? And I don't know what it is. It's like, it's, it's, mm, it's like he's already heavy, you know, like his, his thoughts and the things he does are heavy. And then you've got that comedic relief. And I feel like you really need that comedic relief. And Killian is absolutely hilarious. And I do want to say we did not get as much of him in the other books in the series as we did like other characters. Like Landon was in the series a whole lot in Legacy of Gods. But we didn't get a lot of, of Killian. And I was kind of upset with that because he's my favorite. He was the first person that I read about. He was the first MMC that I read about in the Reniverse. And he's my favorite. I don't know if it's because he was the first, but I love him. Now, Kirill from the Monster Trilogy is close second in the Reniverse, but he's not in my top 10. You know what I mean? I love him. So he is number eight and 
I don't, I don't know if he'll forever stay in my top 10, but he might, who knows? Who knows? Anything can happen. I read a lot of books. Coming in at number seven, we have Deverick Bramwell from Noctacadia by Carrie Lake. Professor Bramwell. One of my favorite scenes in this book is whenever he corners her in a library and the tension is building and they're like, oh, they're at each other's throats. And, you know, he just comes in closer and he touches her bottom lip and you think he's about to kiss her and then he turns and walks away. And I'm so sorry. My rejection sensitivity cannot handle that. I love him. I, I, I love him. He is so moody and broody and older and... Mm. I don't know what it is about Carrie Lake men, but Carrie Lake men just have a little bit of something special. You know what I mean? A little something extra, a little, a little extra spice, you know? Yeah, that, he's got it. He's got it. And he's a freaking scientist. Are you kidding me? He would outsmart me at every turn. And that would make me feel real dumb, but it would also make me feel like in awe, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I just love him. Dark hair, brooding, older, tall dominant professor and the things that come out of this man's mouth are sinful. If you haven't read Noctocadia, by the way, this is the perfect time. It is spooky season and this book is very, very spooky season vibes. It's dark academia. It's, it's, ju it's just so good. It's so good. There's also secret society. So, ooh, ooh. Coming in at number six, we have Reed Crone from Drive by Kate Stewart. This is a rock star romance and it is also one of my favorite books of all time. No surprise there. This is very much right person, wrong time type vibes and it is a love triangle but it is one of the best love triangles I have ever read in my entire life. It is so well done and I was completely immersed while I was reading the entire story. Now read it's it's because I'm a punk rock girl, okay? And usually I don't really like like in real life musicians don't aren't really what, you know, tickles my fancy. But in books, in books, especially because he's a drummer, he's a drummer, so he doesn't sing. So it's not icky. You know what I mean? And he loves so deeply. So deeply. And it just, I, I I miss him. I need to reread this book. Yeah. That's what I need to do because I miss him. He makes my alternative heart so happy, so freaking happy. I adore him. And if you have not read about Reed Crone, you absolutely should. There's also a second book, Reverse, and it's about Reed's son. And he's also a musician. Eh. Uh, a lot of people like Reverse more than they like Drive, but I prefer Drive. I love Drive just because I love Reed and Stella so freaking much, but... Yeah, it's a really good book. You should read it. He is at number six. I don't think he'll ever leave the list either. He may. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows what can happen? Like I said, I read a lot of books, so we'll see. Then this is actually a newer edition coming in at number five. And I'm honestly kind of surprised that he's so high up there. But another blonde, Silas Forbes from The Poisoner by Ivy Ophelia. He's a vampire in Victorian era London. And he gets very, very excited whenever the FMC tries to kill him. Uh -huh. There is a scene where she throws an ax at him. I believe it's an ax or a hatchet, something like that. Anyway, she throws it at him, right? She tries to kill him and it hits the wall. And instead of being like, oh my God, you tried to kill me. He says, marry me. Mar okay, okay, I will. I, yes, I accept. I accept, sir. I love him. He is so like funny. He is so funny and you don't expect him to be so funny because he's a vampire in Victorian era London and it's just, you know, he's old because he's a vampire. He's also super hot, but you know, whatever. Um, of course he is. He's the MMC. I just love a dark but also humorous MMC. He kind of gives like, he's funnier than Killian Carson is from God of Malice, but like he kind of gives the same type of vibes, like moody, broody, but sarcastic, witty, banter, you know, like those vibes. And I love him. And it's just so good. Although he did kind of piss me off in the end, but I get it. I get it. I can't wait for book two. Next up at number four is going to be Tristan Kane from The Predator by Runix. It is so hard to do enemies to lovers in something that is not fantasy romance. And Runix did a perfect job in this one because Tristan Kane. Tristan Kane is moody and broody. He rides a motorcycle, like the crotch rocket. My husband rides a crotch rocket. It just kind of like gives the same vibes. And normally I'm not into men with buzz cuts, but like, I don't know, Tristan, Tristan just does it for me. You know, I think I just love bookmen who are deep 
and he is so emotionally deep because he shut himself off for so long i just i love him this is mafia dark romance if you did not know it is in i believe it's in third person a lot of people have a lot of issues with that but honestly i didn't care i didn't care i was there for him i was there for him and i love him he literally follows our fmc home because somebody else is following her and he gets rid of them for her while he's riding his motorcycle. Mm -hmm. He was oddly territorial for her being someone that he isn't supposed to like or have anything to do with positively. And I love him for that, honestly. I love a territorial man. Anyways, I digress. Next up is going to be the one, the only, Eamon D'Arton from Fairy Dale by Veronica Lancet. I am finally, finally seeing more and more people pick up this book this year for spooky season and it literally brings me so much joy because this is one of my favorite books of all time i read it at the end of year before last i believe it, yeah end of year before last and i have not been able to stop thinking about it since this is just so beautifully written she's a thick book okay but trust the process it's so many different genres in one it is so good and amen is the epitome of i will love you through every single lifetime. Like this man, his love transcends everything. All right, he, mm, I, <laughs> and I don't know also what it is about like Victorian era men, like the way that they speak. <sighs> so basically in this book, he is a part of a love triangle, kind of. It's complicated, but he is a man that our FMC falls in love with in her dreams. I promise it makes sense when you start reading it, okay? It is so good. He is so romantic and he loves her so deeply and the things that he says and the mouth on this man whenever it does get spicy because it gets spicy, but this is a very, very, very slow burn. And if you're okay with that, then read it. I just, I don't know. I, I want everyone to experience this book at least once. I love it so, so much. And I love Eamon so, so much. And he is just top tier. Top tier, that's why he's top three, of course. And then we've got Stone Danvers from the Tales of Weeping Hollow series by Nicole Fiorina. This is Bone Island book two. I love Julian in book one, but Stone just does something to me and he is our third and final blonde in this lineup. Yes, he is. I, Stone is also a Victorian era man and he's, he's like, in this book, he's like a little baby. Not really, okay, that came out very wrong. He's a grown man, okay. He's, he's a grown man, but there's a lot of things that he doesn't understand because of circumstances, right? So our FMC has to teach him things and like explain things to him and stuff like that. And so he falls in love with her while this is all happening. And he's just so freaking romantic, so romantic and moody and broody and territorial. And he's just... I just love him so much. I need to reread this series. Also, this is perfect for spooky season. He's a witch. He's a witch. I know. I know. I love it. The whole series is about a group of men. Each one follows a different one of them. Uh, they are the hollow heathens and they are all cursed and they are part of this one witch coven and there's a rival witch coven in the town too and it's just, it's so, so good and the way that this man speaks, I cannot, I cannot get over it. Look at them. Look at them. Do you see them? Are you? I love him. I love him so much. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for. Who is my number one book boyfriend? If you've been around for a while, you may already know this. That is going to be none other than Julian Hates from the Magnolia Park series. Specifically, we get more of him, like my favorite bits of him are in this book. This one is The Great Undoing by Jessa Hastings. This is the fourth book in the series. I cannot explain the fact that this man is not one of the like core, I mean, he is a core character, but he's not, you get, our main, main characters are Magnolia, BJ, Christian, and Daisy. And Julian is Daisy's brother. And we do get POVs from him. From him can I speak hello but I cannot explain why he is my number one okay because he's not even like the main focus of the book right there's just something about him he's also he is also a crime lord 
Okay, he's dangerous, he's caring, he's poetic, he loves art, he is selfless, he is kind, he's also ruthless, he is an enigma, and I love him. I, ugh, I don't know, I don't know, I can't, it does, the math ain't mathin', it doesn't compute, it's not making sense, I don't know why, but he is, he's number one, and I don't know if it will ever change, because I just adore him. Anything can happen, but he is for sure going to be in my top 10 forever. This series is not over yet. Uh, we still have two books left and I think we're getting his POV. I hope we're getting his POV. If we don't, I will sue. <laughs> Anyways, I love him so, so much. And yeah, so there you have it. Top 10 book boyfriends. I don't have, fun fact about me, I actually don't uh, purchase every single book that I want to because sometimes I like to wait and see if there's going to be a special edition of them. I actually really want to learn how to bookbind soon but I don't have a Cricut and I don't know if it would be one of those ADHD hobbies that I like hyper focus on for like a month and then never touch it again and I don't want that to happen. This is for the one person that asked for my uh, top 10 book boyfriends list and if you want to get to know any of these men you absolutely should because I'm obsessed with them. Uh, it's an unhealthy obsession at this point. I just love bookmen. I don't, I, I can't. Um, bookmen just hit different. They do. I love them. I hope you got a good book wreck out of this. I hope you meet these men. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all of the things. All of my links for all of my other socials are going to be in the description below. And I will see y'all next week. I love you guys.